All right, thank you, Michelle. Now to Caswell County, where a 15 year old is in custody accused of killing a 23 year old. We first brought you this story in breaking news yesterday. According to the sheriff's office, this happened Friday night at a marathon gas station off of Main Street in Yanceyville. Deputies say they found Treshawn Herbin shot and killed. Two others were taken to the hospital. We're told the teenager could face a felony charge of first degree murder if convicted. The suspect is now awaiting the next step in his trial. And we're continuing to learn more about a double homicide this weekend in Lexington. Yesterday, officers found Robert Grant shot and killed at the home of Tussie Street just before 2.30 a.m. Later, police found a second victim, Brittany Pathea, at the hospital where she later died. Police believe the two were killed after a fight ended in gunfire at a house party. Police say they are still searching for a suspect. And in Greensboro, police are also investigating a homicide this morning. It happened on Rocky Knoll Road just before 4 a.m. yesterday. Authorities found 18-year-old Kassan Burgess suffering from a gunshot wound. He died from his injuries. A second gunshot wound victim was hospitalized with non-life-threatening injuries. No suspect information is available at this time. And also in Greensboro, police are investigating a fatal shooting that happened on McPherson Street shortly after 7 a.m. yesterday. Authorities say 34 year old Tony Brewer died. No suspect information or other details from that shooting has been released. The, thir the Durham man accused of pointing a gun at someone at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill will face a judge tomorrow. This comes after authorities say Michael Dante Harris waved a gun at someone at a bagel shop on Wednesday afternoon on campus. Harris first appeared in court virtually last week where he was appointed a public defender. The judge increased his bond from $10,000 to $50,000. The 27 year old is charged with felony carrying a gun on an educational property, misdemeanor assault, as well as threat charges. Over the weekend, people in Winston Salem gathered to remember a loved one lost to violence and working to prevent similar tragedies from happening. Damar Singletary died after being stabbed in Winston Salem earlier this month on September 8th. Yesterday, the Forsyth Freedom Federation met to create people's agenda to unite the community and to decide how to solve community issues such as violence. Singletary was a big part of the youth outreach in Federation. He, his loss was the focus of this event. We got to change the next generation. I want that to affect my kids and the environment that they grew up because as, as much as your parents try to teach you, your environment shapes you just as much. So my goal is to shape the environment so that it can affect their environment. He didn't believe in um, fighting, arguing, all that stuff. He was all about keeping the peace. And as um, a young man, he took on the task of getting that message throughout the younger community. And he also made it like his plight to reach the youth and change their outlook and how they, basically how they were moving, what things they felt were important. Ryan Rizzo is charged with Singletary's death. Rizzo was later run over by a car by another person and a stabbing victim that same day. And looking ahead, tomorrow leaders in Alamance County will meet to discuss a long-term plan to prevent mold after it was found in most schools over the summer. The plan focuses on multiple areas, AVIC systems, roofs, water intrusion, windows, and also staffing. The district says it's looking to add a building manager in each school that will be responsible for changing air filters, identifying leaks, and maintaining the facilities. They also want to do continuous roof repairs and replacements for multiple schools after the projects were put on hold, but these things don't come cheap. We do have some money left over from the 2018 education bond. The commissioners will look at that. Obviously, we have some lottery funding each year. The commissioners give us a portion of the sales tax uh, and the property tax, so all of that uh, they will be looking at. The plan will be presented to county commissioners tomorrow night at 630.